Hi and welcome to this NPRO video tutorial. In this video, I will show you how you can simulate a fifth generation district heating and cooling network with NPRO. Let's dive into it and let's have a look how that works. Um, I will click here on create new project. And then I will um, select as project type district. That's already OK. Um, then click on uh, heating supply. Uh, and here we will choose then fifth generation um, heating and cooling network, uh, also called energy network, um, as the pre-selection here. Um, say cooling supply should be realized um, also by yeah, passive cooling with the heat network. You can also select the location. Um, this will uh, define the weather data that we are using. Uh, and then I will click on create new project. And then we have here on the left hand side uh, three uh, pages. The first one are the buildings. Uh, where we define the um, building loads, building demands. I will click on residential um, building. Then um, we can here define the building type, for example, uh, the subtype um, and um, the, yeah, the demands. So we have space heating demands, domestic hot water demands, and we can, uh, for example, provide the value kilowatt hour per square meter um, and then click on calculate demand profiles. Um, this is always an hourly resolution for the profiles. And uh, one important uh, parameter is the supply and return temperature. Uh, so here we have uh, 65 degrees Celsius for covering the space heating demands. That of course depends on the building type that you have. If you have a modern building, it will be lower. If you have a very old building, maybe even higher. Um, for the domestic hot water, we also have a temperature. Uh, we are providing this uh, 60 uh, degrees Celsius as a tap temperature. Um, and uh, that's important for um, for the temperature difference to the network because the network is now at yeah, like 10 degrees Celsius um, and we need to boost the temperature in the uh, building um, to um, reach the supply temperature of the demands. And how we do um, how do we do that uh, with the energy system here? We can click on heat. Uh, on, on the heating part. And here we see that we are using uh, a heat pump um, in this uh, configuration. Uh, we're using the heat network to boost the heat uh, with the heat pump to uh, cover the domestic hot water demands. And we are boosting the heat with the heat pump to cover the space heating demands. Um, so we are using a heat pump with the heat network as a heat source. And we can then define the COP. It can be a constant value can also be Cano uh, efficiency that we are using, or we can also um, use product data. Um, so we can define our own heat pump, um, then uh, and upload a data sheet with the temperature of the heat sink and the temperature of the heat source. Um, I will just use the, the basic, or let's, let's try the Cano formula. Um, I will click on uh, save and close. And for the supermarket, I will also um, go into the settings and um, I will, I think I will deactivate the process cooling because otherwise it's a right, uh, it's really a lot of uh, cooling demand for this building. And I will explain how the cooling works. So um, if we have cooling demand in the building, we can um, choose the chiller with passive cooling um, for the fifth generation heat network at least. Um, so that means that if the network temperature is um, uh, very low or low enough to supply the cooling demand, um, then um, it's uh, it will be used. Uh, it, passive cooling will be used to um, cover the demands. And here we see the um, temperature of the cooling demand. So we have 12 and 18 degrees Celsius. So if the cold pipe of the network is um, lower than 12 degrees Celsius, plus a delta T then um, it will uh, use the passive cooling. Um, all right, so let's say save and close. And um, then here on the bottom, uh, we see um, yeah, the first results of the calculation. So we see the total uh, space heating demand of the district, the domestic hot water demand of the district. And then we see that um, some parts of the uh, demand is already covered with the decentral heat pumps. Um, so that's basically basically the electricity input for the heat pumps. And we have some waste heat recovery within the buildings. 
Um, so, for example, if we have cooling and uh, heating at the same time, then we can uh, balance these demands within the building. And then at the end, we need to um, take 1,500 megawatt hours from the heat network um, that goes into the buildings. Um, on the right hand side, we have the um, sheet for the cooling demand. Um, and here we see the same values. So the heat recovery reduces the heat demand as well as the cooling demand. Um, we have different uh, options to visualize the demand. So uh, heating and cooling in red and gray. And we also have the electricity um, calculations. So we have the decentral heat pumps, which have a certain uh, electricity demand. Um, and um, yeah, that's need to be covered then. Um, let's go to the second page. Um, if I click on next, um, then we can define the heat network. So um, basically the most important parameter is the uh, supply and return temperature. So the temperature of the warm and the cold pipe. Um, then and two is, is a good estimation, but could be slightly different depending on which uh, heat source you want to use. Um, we can then um, also define the installation depth and the uh, network section. So um, if you know the length of your network already, then you can um, yeah, um, approximate them and, and uh, input the uh, different sections in this table. Um, if I click on it, um, you see that you can define the length, the material, the diameter, uh, the insulation also. Um, so for fifth generation, we often use plastic pipe with, without insulation. Um, and that's um, here already in the table. And if the heat loss is negative, you will see um, this means that the, you don't have any loss on an, um, uh, in total over the year, but you have uh, some heat gains here. Um, in this plot, you see the uh, heat flow from the network to the ground. So in winter, um, we have a heat uh, loss. So heat is going from the network to the ground. And in summer, it's actually the opposite. There we have some heat gains. Um, we also see the uh, temperature profiles of the ground, as well as the supply and return uh, temperature of the network. And here on the in the tables, we now have some additional um, uh, entries. So uh, this part uh, we already had a look at, uh, but here we see now the we have heat recovery among buildings, so between buildings. So if the supermarket has uh, some waste heat, um, and at the same time the residential building uh, has uh, heating demand, then we can uh, balance heating and cooling uh, demands between the two buildings. Um, the heat gains and heat losses um, refer to the network um, and then the uh, heat feed in as the energy hub is the demand that we actually need to, need to cover from the central heat source. On the right hand side we have this similar um, analysis. So here we have cold losses for the network and also the heat recovery entry. Um, in this graph, we see the uh, heating, there is a resulting heating and cooling demands of the uh, network. So in the fifth generation heat, uh, heating and cooling network can also only be uh, heating or cooling um, demand at the, uh, one time slot, so to say. Uh, we cannot have both at the same time. Um, all right, now I go up and then we have a look uh, how we can now cover these demands. Um, let's say that we want to use geothermal uh, probes, for example, and an air source heat pump. And we could go into the details and um, define, okay, what is the COP of the air source heat pump? Uh, we can again use product data. We can also use Cano or also upload our own uh, profiles. I click on uh, calculate profiles. And then we see the profile of the COP. So because that's like the fifth generation, this heating and cooling network, we have very low temperatures and therefore uh, very high COPs, of course, for the heat pump. Um, for the geothermal, we need to deactivate the heat pump. So um, by default, it uh, installs a heat pump, but that's, that's not needed actually, um, because we directly use the heat from the ground uh, to cover the demands of the fifth generation heat network. Um, so that would be our setting. Um, 
Let's um, have a look uh, here at the economic uh, parameters. So we can define the electricity price. We can also define all the investment costs of the uh, different technologies. And then uh, we click on size technologies. And then we get the optimal um, system configuration. So um, how much capacity for the heat pump and how much um, uh, geothermal capacity do we need? That's like from the capacity, it's yeah almost a 50-50 thing, uh, but we see that the geothermal um, is used, the geothermal probes are used for the base load and the air source heat pump is used for the peak load then. Um, and we also get the optimal sizing for the PV. Uh, then we click on simulate system operation and um, then we get the yeah, detailed analysis about the uh, operation of the system over the entire year with 8760 uh, values. Um, so the first thing that we see is the energy flow chart. Um, here we see how much uh, heat is coming from the geothermal probes, how much is covered by the air source heat pump and also um, how is the cooling demand of the network covered. We could now go into the maybe winter season. Uh, then we see that the heating uh, loads uh, are dominant, but uh, could also have a look at the summer season. Um, yeah, and in both cases, the geothermal is, is the uh, dominant uh, source for heating and cooling. Um, here on the bottom, we can um, visualize some more um, um, things. Uh, the profiles in a different way. Um, so on the positive uh, uh, y-axis, we see the uh, generation of heat um, by the air source heat pump and the geothermal probes, and the negative direction is the heat demand. We could also visualize the uh, electricity, and um, this can be done with monthly values, but it can also be um, an hourly resolution. If we click on summary, uh, we get the most important KPIs of the system, so how much Electricity do we need to import from the grid? How much um, uh, is uh, renewable from the PV modules? Um, we see the feed in of the PV um, electricity and um, get some KPIs regarding self-sufficiency rate and self-consumption rate. Um, on the bottom here, we see the uh, how much heat is covered actually by the air source heat pump, 7.6% and 92% uh, are coming from the geothermal probes. Um, so we will see also the emissions. Um, we can um, define our own specific emissions here, gram per kilowatt hour, and then um, see how much emissions um, uh, the system has. Uh, on the right hand side, we can click on download time series. Um, if we want to go into the details, then we get an Excel sheet with all the details and all the profiles. Now we'll click on go to result page on the bottom and then um, we see here the most important uh, results um, in an overview. Uh, we have the economic results as well. So the investments um, for the air source heat pump, for example, but also for the uh, network and the decentral um, building heat pumps. Um, this is all included in this analysis for the economic results. We get the cash flow table and uh, can go into the details how are the costs um, distributed over the different parts of the system. Um, if I click on summary and scenarios, uh, we have the possibility to um, create a new scenario here. Um, I will click on duplicate scenario because I want to um, compare this fifth generation solution now with um, decentral heat pumps. Um, so we now have here scenario number one and scenario number two. Let's um, rename this. Uh, yeah, let's call it fifth generation uh, district heating and cooling network. And scenario number two should be the central heat pumps. Um, let's click on rename. And then I will open the scenario decentral heat pumps. Um, I will keep the uh, project project data. I will also, um, yeah, I will change. I, I will not change the demands, but I will change the uh, building energy system. So I click on uh, on the residential building, and I will here say that we want to um, cover the cooling demands uh, with with ambient air. We will also cover the heating demands 
is an air source heat pump. So in this case, the building is not connected to the building to the network anymore. I will click on save and close. Um, and for the supermarket, um, I will do the same. Um, click on ambient air as the heat source for the heat pump. So then it's not uh, connected to the network anymore. And uh, save and close. And um, here we will see now that the uh, heat import um, is zero and also the uh, cooling, um, the waste heat that we um, uh, put into the network is also zero because all the heating demands um, are now covered with the air source heat pump um, directly decentrally. Um, all right, if I click on the next page, uh, here you get the message that uh, the district doesn't have any uh, network because there are no um, uh, demands that needs to be covered with the network. Um, and then we can directly go to the next page. Um, here we have the energy hub. Uh, we actually only have a um, electricity demand now for the decentral uh, air source heat pumps, for example. Um, so let's calculate it. I will click on size technologies. Um, that's a very simple calculation now. We are only sizing the um, PV modules. And um, yeah, on the system operations, also very simple. Uh, then I click on go to result page. Uh, and here we um, can now load the second scenario. So I will click on load scenario and then say fifth generation heat network that we uh, calculated two minutes ago. Um, click on OK. And now we have the comparison of the total annualized costs here, for example, and the CO2 emissions um, for both scenarios. Um, we also see the um, electricity import and feed in, um, and we have all the figures uh, directly next to each other to see, OK, um, how uh, does the, uh, how do the different uh, scenarios um, differ, differ from each other? Um, we can click on economic results um, to see the differences here and compare the two solutions and see which is, um, which is, uh, which scenario is, is better for the district. All right, thank you very much um, for your attention. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know, uh, write into the comments some uh, things that uh, were not clear with this video. We will answer that or also make some additional videos. Um, yeah, thank you very much and uh, see you next time.